Hello everyone and welcome back to another book review. Today I am going to be reviewing the book Walkable City, How Downtown Can Save America One Step at a Time by Jeff Speck and this is the, the 10th anniversary edition. So one thing I wanted to note right off the bat is if you choose to read Walkable City, I do recommend the 10th anniversary edition. There was an original book, I assume 10 years before this book, that was what this book is based off of. However, it is a little older at this point, so I think reading the 10th anniversary edition is important. It still has the entire original Walkable City book, but then at the end he provides updates to his original book, including things that didn't come to pass, things that came true more than he thought, things that he wished he could have changed from the original book, which I really appreciated and liked. So before I talk about the 10th anniversary section, let's talk about Walkable City as a whole and also my personal experience and what drew me to this book. So I pulled this book off the shelf because I personally have a strong interest in city design. I am fascinated by the way that a city is designed can influence the people who live in it. And particularly, I noticed that walkability is a huge feature. So I've lived in a couple of places in my life. I grew up in a small town, population about 8,000, and it was surprisingly walkable and the city surprisingly cared a lot. That was something that I didn't really notice until I moved away to a couple other locations, including one city that was also about city. I'm using city loosely here. One area that was about 8,000 people as well, but did not care about walkability. And that's kind of what prompted my interest. Living in two towns that had the same population and very similar median incomes in the same region of the United States that were just vastly different. And that's what kind of sparked my interest in what makes a city good to live in. And a key feature of that, I'm convinced, is the walkability factor of a city. This book drew me to it because I'm interested in hearing what Jeff Speck had to say about a city that is walkable, particularly a downtown that is walkable, and how it matched up with my personal experience and also other books. I have read a number of other books on this topic and I have really enjoyed those other books, so I thought that this would be a good compliment to what I've already read. Um... Jeff Speck is all in on some stuff that I personally agree with. I live in the United States, if it isn't obvious, but there's other countries in the world that struggle with this. I think some other big ones are probably um, large portions of Canada, and he seemed to indicate that there could be room for improvement in the UK. I do think, as mentioned in this book and a lot of other books, Western Europe is ahead of the United States in this aspect and making a area that you do not need a car to survive. But a lot of the United States, which is all I'm really going to reference for my personal opinion here because that's where I live, is heavily car dependent. I currently live in a very walkable area. I can walk to the grocery store, the library, downtown of my city, lots of parks, um, any uh, minor sports games that I want to go to. There's a lot of walkability in my city. I also am familiar with the bus system, which is comprehensive enough for me to get to most places. And despite that, I have a car. And that is because where I live, there is not a lot of well, where I live is walkable. You can't really get outside the city in any meaningful way without a car. In fact, places I work outside the city require a car to get to. There is no alternative. Visiting family, there is literally no alternative, not even a bus line that goes to where a lot of my family lives. I need a bus, I need a personal car to go almost anywhere else in the United States. There really isn't a lot of options. Even if you fly somewhere, you usually wind up needing to have a car or renting a car to get around. And the car dependency really becomes noticeable, especially when you start reading this book. He calls out all the ways in which we are expected to use our car in our daily life. And I think he makes a good point because he does kind of go hard on the fact that people should be able to live without cars. He goes, he does emphasize a point at the beginning that I think is important to keep in mind, and that is a car is a tool, but we should not build our lives around the car. A car has a place in modern society, a car has a role to play, and it's not saying that everyone should give up their cars and no one should use a car. But I do think that we have built our lives around owning a car and that has been to our detriment and to humans' detriment. As someone who has lived in a wide variety of places, places where I can walk are infinitely nicer to live in and nicer from like a human perspective, not necessarily just better houses and whatnot. Although he does mention that living in a walkable area does tend to increase housing and property values, which is something I'm going to touch on in a minute. But it's just 
good to live in an area where you can walk. When I wanted to go uh, to a hockey game with my sisters, they came over to my house by car because they live in the small city and there is no way to get to my house from the small city. But then we walked to the hockey game and then we could stop at the grocery store and get something and I can go to the library. If I run out of butter, I can walk to the grocery store. If I need to pick up my library book, I can walk to the local library branch. If I want to go to the park, I can walk to the park. There are so many things I can walk to, restaurants, bars, anything I want in this very walkable area and it does make a noticeable difference. Jeff Speck appears to be, or my understanding is he's a consultant, so he works with cities, and this book is all about talking about what works in a city and what hasn't worked in a city. Ways that cities have been destroyed, their walkability has been destroyed, and what we can do to bring the walkability back. Because as he mentioned, when you bring walkability into a city, it's a more human-centered city instead of a car-centered city, and that makes a huge difference on our quality of life, which I strongly agree with. This, well, I, well, I have had a strong interest in this for a while and I do understand that um, doing more of my daily life without a car has a huge benefit on me. I think that this book has kind of reignited that fire and made me think, how, how am I using my car in my daily life where maybe I don't need to? Or what ways can I try to maybe help out to make the area I live in even more walkable? Now, something that Jeff Speck just kind of touches on, and I'm not saying he needs to have a solution for every problem, that his walkability presents. But something that's just worth keeping in mind is he always talks about how, well, then the property values are gonna increase. If you if you increase the walkability, the property values increase. Now, to his credit, he does talk about how increasing walkability will increase the lives of people who are not high earners, who, because he mentions people who aren't high earners tend to get pushed into areas that are cheaper and therefore less walkable. And then they are usually the ones who are in these areas because they might be forced to walk due to an inability to own a car. They ha are the victims in things like car crashes with car versus pedestrian or car versus bike. So walkability strongly impacts those of us amongst us who have the least resources to deal with it. However, when, he, when he's really hammering how good it's gonna be for property values, it also makes you think about, um, it kind of benefits the people who already have the houses in the area. So in an ideal world, all cities are made walkable and everyone benefits. However, in practice, I see that when an area becomes walkable, it's the people who bought the houses in that area first who benefit. Their property values go back up, which no shame to them, like they bought the house and now their property values are going up, but it kind of makes it difficult for anyone else to get in. And I can see that where I live now, where rent has been increasing and home prices can be increasing. And even looking at what it was 20 years ago, if the area has become way more walkable, home prices have gone way up. And at a certain point, people who are lower on the economic um, or lower in income are not going to be able to purchase houses in these areas because they've been pushed out by this increase in walkability. So I do wonder... Well, in theory, all cities are being made walkable, so all, everyone is going to be able to benefit from this, which I think is Jeff Speck's goal, and I think that's um, noble, and I think that's where we should aim to be so everyone benefits. I feel like in practice, by just doing this piecework improvements around the, the United States, what we're doing is we're increasing property values for those who are lucky enough to have bought a house in an area that is becoming walkable, and in return, allowing them to have a better life, which they should. Those people should be allowed to have a better life and benefit from walkability. But I think it's we really need to think about how we're not going to leave the people who are, who would be mostly impacted who would be who'd have the most impact by making the city walkable. So people who are currently having to walk in areas that aren't safe to walk in and having to um, bike in areas that aren't safe and who are struggling due to things like poor public transit because they don't have the ability to own a car. Unlike people like me who have the ability to own a car and therefore while these cities are car dependent and very negative and have an impact on me, they do not have as much of an impact if I were being forced to take a bus to work which may be very long and very complicated. But I do think overall this is a fabulous book. I think everyone should read one. Even if you live in the country and walkable cities do not apply to you, I think every single person should be forced to read this book and see what has been done to our cities and start making a noise at things like public meetings and planning meetings and city council meetings demanding that our cities be made walkable again and I think he does a really good job infusing his passion for this topic in this and I think that like I said if we can make all of our cities walkable we can have a good impact on everyone in the economic spectrum and everyone is going to be able to benefit from walkability not just a select few. I think this is a very important book. I did like the 10th anniversary edition 
updates. One thing that I noticed when I was reading it is he had a comment about saying that bike share programs like where you can rent a bike to ride and return it weren't really going to take off in the United States and he does address it in the 10th anniversary section because I thought when I read that, now wait a second, this book must be older because I feel like those are everywhere. Almost every larger city I go to has these bike rentals. Even small cities have the bike rental programs where you can just get a bike off the sidewalk, ride around and then return it and they're incredibly popular. So. I didn't know what he was talking about. He addressed it in the 10th anniversary edition saying like this took off a lot more than I thought. And I think that 10 year update really provides a lot of context and also keeps the book from being a little more dated. So I do recommend if you're going to read Walkable City, you read the 10th anniversary edition. Um, I am very passionate about building walkable cities. Um, unfortunately, my job is not in city planning or anything like that, so I'm not sure exactly what I can do. I just kind of voted with my money and I moved back to an area that was more walkable. I was living in a very unwalkable area of the United States and um, to explain how bad this was, my job was less than a mile away on the same road that I lived on, but due to the way the road was just massively wide, which he talks about in this book, just unlimited amounts of traffic, no sidewalk, um, and the way they plowed the snow meant that there was actually no place to walk in the winter other than on top of these huge precarious ice banks. There was not even a little, what do you call it, a strip on the side of the road for people to pull off. It was just jam-packed with cars that were speeding, which Walkable City discusses, how people will drive the speed that the road is engineered for, not necessarily the posted speed. It was incredibly dangerous. So every morning I would have to get in my car for a like three minute ride to work that I could have walked to or biked to, except it was was literally impossible. It would have been dangerous to my life to walk or drive to work. And I'm not the kind of person who's like, well, if there's no sidewalk, I can't walk. I've been comfortable walking in places that don't have a sidewalk, but have a good area on the side of the road and cars are moving slowly enough. This was actually dangerous and it frustrated me to no end to live so close to work and to have to drive my car to work every day even though I can quite literally see the building that I worked in from where I live. Just the entire way the city was set up was incredibly detrimental. Now COVID happened and I wound up working from home so it didn't wind up being a problem. But when that job wanted to move me to a suburb, which is my least favorite place in the whole world, suburbs suck my soul out. I do not enjoy being in them for a minute. They feel like dead soulless places where everyone's avoiding each other for some reason. I found a different job and I voted with my money to move to a place that I knew was more walkable and a little bit more friendly, places where I could work from home. Even if I had to drive to work, I could walk to restaurants, bakeries, parks, library branches, gyms, a lot of things within walking distance. And I think that, yeah, I think that there's a lot of positive change happening in the United States. Again, I'm only speaking about the United States from personal history, but I think everyone who lives in an area that is very car dependent should read this book and then try to start making, try to start making actionable changes. I know I'm going to be taking what I read in this book and kind of meditating on it in a sense and seeing what I can do to make the area I live in even more walkable, but also keeping in mind how I can um, how these changes can impact everybody, including the people who are less fortunate and don't have the ability to own a car like I do. I think this is a must read for everybody. Everybody needs to get this book. Everybody needs to read it. And we all need to start making our, decentering our cities um, from the car. We need to start making a city that's built for humans and not built for cars. And we need to do this soon because I think there's a big positive impact that everyone can have by making their city um, more human centered and while retaining the car, the car becomes the tool instead of being a master of us and our lives. Love this book. Highly recommend it. If anyone has any thoughts on this, I would love to hear it. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a great rest of your day.